On any given day, there are about 9,700 juvenile offenders housed in juvenile justice facilities throughout California. Almost 90% of those are housed in county-run juvenile halls or camps, and the rest are housed in facilities run by the Division of Juvenile Justice, or DJJ, which is a part of the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Over the last 16 years, the counties have taken on a much larger portion of responsibility for housing juvenile offenders, and this is mostly due to a number of realignment measures enacted by the legislature. For example, in 1996, the legislature enacted a sliding scale fee that charged counties a portion of the state's cost to house an offender in a state facility. So the more serious an offense, the less a county would be charged, and the less serious an offense, the more they would be charged. This was designed to encourage counties to house less serious offenders themselves and only send more serious offenders to the state. And more recently, in 2007, the legislature limited the uh, offenders that could be housed in a DJJ facility to only serious, violent, or sex offenders. These measures, along with an overall decrease in juvenile crime, have caused the number of offenders housed in state facilities to shrink dramatically. In 1996, DJJ housed nearly 10,000 offenders on any given day. And in uh, the current year, that number has shrunk to just under 1,100. Currently, about uh, two-thirds of offenders admitted to DJJ in the last fiscal year were admitted for an assault or a robbery, about 15% for a sex offense, and about 6% for a homicide. For various reasons, including an ongoing lawsuit, it's relatively expensive to house an offender in a state juvenile facility. The state pays about $180,000 per year per offender from the general fund currently, which puts DJJ's total cost at about $200 million. The governor's budget for this next year includes a plan to complete the realignment of juvenile justice to the counties, and it would do this by stopping the intake of new awards to DJJ on January 1st of 2013. The plan would also provide counties with ongoing funding to support their new responsibilities. We think the governor's proposal has merit for a number of reasons. By completely realigning juvenile justice responsibilities to the county, it gives counties an incentive to uh, invest in juvenile crime prevention and intervention efforts since they would have to uh, bear the cost of bad outcomes further on down the road. And counties are also in a better position generally to make sure that offenders who are released out into the community uh, get a continuity of service and so that they get the same types of services that they got in the facilities and that they continue to get those on an ongoing basis. However, there are a number of issues that the governor's proposal leaves unanswered. For instance, how much funding should be provided to counties and how that funding should be allocated among counties. The legislature also needs to take into consideration how prepared various counties are to manage a more serious type of offender. While our analysis suggests that counties have enough physical space to house the additional offenders, uh, the legislature should consider whether this type of space is appropriate and what, if any, additional programmatic support they need to develop to provide to offenders. If DJJ were to close, there might also be an increase in the number of juvenile offenders who are tried in adult court. Now, under state and federal law, uh, juvenile offenders sentenced to state prison in adult court have to be separated from adult prison inmates until they turn 18. And if DJJ were to close, these offenders would have to be housed somewhere else. In our report, we recommend that the legislature approve a modified version of the governor's proposal that ensures an efficient and smooth transition. On deciding how much money to appropriate to counties, we recommend that the legislature task the new Board of State and Community Corrections with making an assessment of what a reasonable cost would be to house this more serious type of offender. In deciding how money should be allocated among counties, we're recommending that the legislature take two factors into consideration. The first being a county's 10 to 17 juvenile population, and the second being a county's uh, number of juvenile felonies that they see in any given year. The Board of State and Community Corrections should also play a role in providing technical assistance to counties and in helping counties coordinate and contract with each other and work together to develop regional facilities. 
Ultimately, we think completing the realignment of juvenile justice is a good fiscal decision and a good policy decision.